Thank you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Hey, we got some work for you to do. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Highway Commissioner now. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having me here today uh, to be able to address you. It's been, uh, been a little over a year since I've actually had a chance to come and talk to you. And I want to say first and foremost, uh, thanks for your work. Uh, this is an awful lot of work, incredibly important work uh, for our citizens to, to make the tough decisions about how we're going to provide the uh, road and bridge and rail and other infrastructure that's necessary to get our uh, citizens around in the fastest possible way and get goods to market as quick, quickly and efficiently as possible. And, and I know this is a lot of time. All of you have uh, busy jobs. Uh, hope the pay's not great, but the benefits are good. That's what we promised you, and I hope that's still, uh, still your feeling. Many of you have been serving on the boards. Uh, Shep, you agree with that, I'm sure. Uh, that uh, I hope you agree with that after the many years you've served on here. Th this is really an exciting time uh, for us in, in Virginia with what we're going to be able to do for transportation infrastructure over these next, uh, the next uh, few years. Uh, it's sort of a historic meeting where you uh, will act on these 900 projects that the Secretary and the Commissioner have recommended and the other Commissioners. And department directors have recommended that you add on I think the first time in years that projects have actually been added and will be able to be funded in the Commonwealth Tra Transportation Board's uh, six-year plan uh, for 2012 to 2017. So um, I appreciate it. More work to do, but uh, this is what the citizens have been asking about for a while in uh, improving our uh, transportation infrastructure. It's a creative package that the General Assembly got passed. I hope you've had a chance to look uh, through it uh, because it's not just money, it's also qualitative improvements, it's more accountability for VDOT and other departments, and uh, really a team effort, a bipartisan effort by the House and the Senate, Republican and Democrat uh, leaders to be able to get this, uh, get this bill uh, done. Now, the last time I was uh, here for you, I asked you to reopen the rest stops. Thanks for doing that. Uh, now I'm asking you to build roads and bridges and rail, and I hope you'll uh, do that as well, but uh, working together, with our team and your leadership here at the CTB, a number of things have, uh, have been done. You did get the rest stops reopened. We did get some creative ways to help uh, fund those this year with inmate labor and now uh, redoing some contracts, commercial advertising to drive those costs down to help save you some money for other things, so 70 mile an hour uh, speed limit. Uh, we did four audits of the Department of Transportation. Mr. Worley's the most audited man in Richmond. And, uh, he did a few himself when he was in his previous job. But the good news out of all that is about a billion four of uh, money was uh, found that we could deploy in more productive ways, and that's being done. In fact, that's helping to capitalize the Virginia Transportation Infrastructure Bank that was uh, created this year. It's also helped uh, to push out uh, $1.1 billion in uh, new projects uh, last, uh, last uh, year. In fact, the first six months of the fiscal year uh, 11, uh, almost twice as much what was pushed out in the previous six months. So that, that is progress, and that's the good news, and I've heard from a lot of the road contractors that they're thrilled to be getting people back to work, and they were the ones that were some of the hardest hit in 07, 08, 09, and now they're getting people back to work. So it's, it's real new jobs. Uh, this bill, uh, this transportation bill has been evaluated by uh, Chimura Economics, and they believe it's uh, the impact is as much as 100,000 new jobs, $13 billion in new revenues coming to the state. Uh, that's real money in any economy, but that's how much uh, $4 billion in transportation infrastructure can leverage over the next, uh, the next couple of years. So we're very, um, very excited about what's, uh, what's going to happen. There were other things uh, that were uh, done uh, by the legislation and finding ways to streamline the planning processes to create a multimodal uh, PPTA office uh, and uh, many other uh, things that are in the bill, some of which I want to mention specifically in a minute. But uh, I would like to, again, express my appreciation to uh, Speaker Bill Howe as well as uh, Senators uh, Wampler and Senators Colgan. Uh, that bipartisan effort between the lead key leaders, top leaders in both the House and the Senate uh, led to good negotiation early on. Uh, that led to this transportation bill getting passed uh, with such uh, significant uh, uh, support. A couple of the other things that it does uh, that impact you uh, indirectly, and money has been the biggest issue, and uh, your vote on the six-year plan will primarily focus on 
on money, uh, but it also helps to streamline the project uh, completion process, enables VDOT to submit just one comprehensive report. We're trying to do everything we can to cut down administration and bureaucracy across state government. That helps. Uh, it, uh, of course, gives the commissioner a new title, back to his old title, the commissioner of highways, and a lot more flexibility on how he can spend uh, some money and do some things, frankly, uh, without you having to give approval for everything that the commissioner does, make him more uh, effective in that regard, gives uh, Commissioner Drake and DRPT greater flexibility in utilizing its resources, repeals a number of outdated laws and regulations, and of course, First and foremost, it, it, does, uh, it creates that framework for $4 billion of new resources for transportation over the next uh, three years. And you know how we got there. You've got that presentation about a billion eight in accelerated bonds. And the reason we did that is really pretty evident, and that is we are getting some of the very best deals that we've seen in recent history because of the competition among road contractors. They want to get people back to work. They want to have uh, jobs. Uh, and uh, they are incredibly competitive now with the rates. Uh, with the stimulus money the Secretary pushed out the door with your help, you saw how those rates were coming in below the estimates, sometimes 10, 15, 20 percent uh, below the estimates. So we actually had to rebid again with the money that was left over. It's the same dynamic that we've got. I've got here with these uh, transportation dollars. It's a great time, in fact, the best in recent time to actually build roads. The interest rates, we got that AAA bond rating. It's a great time to be able to uh, uh, utilize your AAA bond rating and your limited debt capacity of 5%. Uh, we took leaders, uh, both parties, up to Wall Street back in January. We met with the bond rating agencies. They were very bullish on, bullish on Virginia. Uh, they were very uh, appreciative of the fact that we're using creative financing, especially through our, our debt, uh, in order to uh, build roads. And frankly, it's things like the retirement system liabilities and road infrastructure that were the things that they had some questions about in Virginia. So not only are they, uh, you know, appreciative of uh, the fact that we're building roads, but the fact that we're using it through uh, our AAA bond rating that we've prized for over seven, seven decades here in Virginia was one that met with some favor. A billion one in uh, Garvey bonds. I'm sure the commissioners explained how we're leveraging that federal money uh, that's coming down. And then the infrastructure bank. And I applaud the commissioner and uh, the secretary uh, for their leadership in devising that. Other states have done it. The federal government's done it to be able to help jumpstart some of these regional and uh, local projects that had been unfunded or underfunded in the six-year plan. But now with uh, loans, loan guarantees, and in some cases grants that you may approve, you're going to be able to get a lot of those projects uh, jump-started uh, locally, and that, uh, that's a win-win for local government as well. And so uh, overall, it's, uh, it's a good chunk of money. We hope uh, in the next couple of years with surpluses, and we hope to see another one this year based on the way revenues are growing uh, in Virginia overall, up 9 to 16 percent the last five months. You've actually had an uptick in TTF revenues as well, even in the tough economy. So that's obviously positive news for Virginia. Uh, but as we um, continue to uh, record surpluses uh, by statute and maybe by my direction, we'll put more money into that uh, transportation infrastructure bank with a goal of ultimately a billion dollars uh, available. But we're, we're starting with that 283 in, uh, in capitalization. Uh, the good news is uh, there's a list of 900 projects that are before you today. And uh, the Secretary and the Commissioner have spent a lot of time putting those together based on congestion relief, economic development, other uh, factors that were critically important deciding which are the road projects that we need to go forward on. And, and you all have been instrumental over the last couple of years in accumulating that list. Well, now you get the money to go with the list and then add those projects to the list that we're, uh, that we're recommending uh, to you today, and I think that's a significant step forward. Let me just give you a couple ideas of what things uh, you're looking at, because these are <coughs> big ideas, big projects that will uh, positively affect our citizens, whether it's Hampton Roads or Page uh, County or Northern Virginia or uh, Loudoun County. I mean, everybody's going to get uh, some piece of this action. Widening 66 um, from Gainesville to Haymarket, phase two of the Route 581 uh, interchange in the Salem Roanoke uh, district, widening I 64 from 288 to 623. 
a number of primary road system projects like widening, or widening Route 7 and uh, Route 123 interpringe projects in uh, Northern Virginia. Commissioner Rich, I know you'll uh, like that one. Uh, reconstructing Route 17 in Fredericksburg, Route 58 corridor development in the Bristol and the Salem uh, districts, uh, widening Lynn Haven Parkway and replacing the Lesnar Bridge in my old home of, of uh, Virginia uh, Beach, widening Route 711 in Huguenot, uh, along the Huguenot Trail corridor in Richmond. Of course, uh, some of my favorites, the Midtown Tunnel Project, the Martin Luther King Project, I-95 hot lanes in Northern Virginia back on track, and then the Route 460 corridor in Hampton Roads, which I think is instrumental to the maintenance of the free world, as I've told the commissioner on many <laughs> occasions in creating that new route for the military, hurricane evacuation, economic development from Petersburg to uh, Suffolk, a critically important project. So these are real new projects with uh, real new money uh, that are going to affect uh, real people's uh, lives in the uh, coming uh, months and years as you get these projects. Uh, projects going. We also have significant investment in rail and transit. In fact, a certain percentage by statute of those bonds uh, must go to those projects, about 20, 24, 25 percent overall. And those include things like improvement to the Norfolk Southern infrastructure along the 81 Crescent Quarter, replacing the VRE rail cars uh, and extending the third track to, to all the way to Spotsylvania, uh, bus replacements for transit operators. Uh, really uh, across, uh, across the Commonwealth. So it's a big list. That's a handful of that 900, but they're, uh, they're big ideas, and uh, I'm glad to be able to come back to you this year uh, with, uh, with some good news. Now, we've got a lot more to do, uh, and we're going to be looking for other opportunities over this next year to generate additional and perhaps even more reliable sources of revenue as you, um, as you look at solving the transportation challenges. Uh, I've told you all many times that my top priority is to create jobs and opportunity uh, for our citizens. When we travel to California, New York, Illinois, and say you need to come to Virginia, or as I'm doing in a couple of weeks, going to China, Japan, Korea, later on to India, and say you need to invest in Virginia and you need to export more goods from Virginia uh, to, uh, to your country. You know, one of their questions uh, always is, well, what, what's, what's your quality of life? How can we how can we um, take advantage of everything from your education institutions to your transportation systems? And that's why you saw this effort this year of transportation, higher education, job creation. We want to become a magnet for economic development and growth. We're coming out of this global economic downturn better than most states, as you see with these significant increases in revenues. That's without tax increases. It's sales tax revenue up. It's income tax withholding up. These are all very positive signs. Uh, but for me to be able to tell the Virginia story near and wide about why they need to invest here, we've got to have a solid and reliable and sustainable transportation system. So it's good news. I appreciate uh, your uh, service and your leadership here. Uh, again, this wouldn't have been possible without some in incredible hard work and innovation by the Secretary. Uh, we've had countless meetings uh, over the last six months uh, with he and his, uh, his team of uh, managers and directors to come up with the right ideas that made economic sense that were politically doable. And I think you saw by the vote on this, these bills in the General Assembly, I think we, uh, we uh, kind of found the right, uh, the right mix. So keep up the good work. Spend wisely, <laughs> as you will. Ask tough questions. Uh, don't take anything uh, my team says for granted. Make sure that you know they're giving you the right scoop, uh, which I know they always do. And uh, that's, uh, that's your job. You are the, you are the board of directors and uh, for our management team. And we really appreciate the partnership with you all using your considerable expertise on a volunteer basis uh, to do good things for the people of Virginia. So keep up the good work. We're going to continue to find those revenues and other ways to make our transportation systems work better. And I appreciate to be here to share a little bit of good news. And uh, God bless you for your service to Virginia. Thanks.